Okay, um, we got in these cool iFixit soldering irons. So iFixit, um, <laughs> they make them really good quality tools um, for repair and they do documentation. Good cause, software. good business. Good USB. So this is a USB-C um, soldering iron. It works really well. Uh, it, you know, I like at, when these USB C soldering irons first came out. Well, first off, I'll say the other USB soldering irons I've tried are very uncomfortable. They're like really skinny. This one feels yeah. good. It feels comfortable to use. It has a USB port. It comes with a USB cable, but you can of course use like which locks in place, which is like so elegant. But you can also use an off-the-shelf one. You will need a USB C power supply to go with it, but you probably have one because you have like your laptop that runs on USB C, or you have a laptop that has like. Um, uh, a Lenovo plug, you can get an adapter that turns into USB-C. So you'll need a 100 watt, 20 volt power supply. Like I said, you, you, you probably have one for your laptop um, or your tablet or some other devices around the house. Um, so we don't include it. You plug it in and you have a full soldering iron and you can plug it into your computer to configure it. Which I think is cool. Yeah, so you want. Like, it comes with like a terminal and stuff like that. Hackaday has a fun article. Yeah, you can use a terminal to configure. I'll say like it comes with the good default settings for the temperature, but if you want yeah. to like tweak it because you're like, I'm only using lead and solder, I never need lead free temperature. Yeah. All right, next up. Okay, next up coming soon, I didn't finish the tester. It's a breakout for the CP2105, which may sound familiar because we have stocked the 2104 and the 2102, and those are. USB to serial port converter chips. This is a USB to dual port serial. So instead of just getting one COM port, when you plug it in, you get two COM ports. Um, both have RX and TX, RTS, CTS, DSR, DTR, and ring. There's also like a mini 3.3 volt regulator on there, although it's not very good. It's 50 milliamps, but still, you know, maybe you just need a small 3.3 volt reference or something. Um, but the cool thing is that you get like two COM ports. So if you need, if you have like two microcontrollers or two devices or two whatever, and you need to access both of them and you want control signals and um, you don't want to use a USB hub, this is like not that much more expensive than a single port, but you get two. Um, it's the same shape as and like physical layout as the CP2102, but watch out, it's not pin compatible because on the left side is one COM port and on the other right side is the right COM port. And the end is an FTA compatible that it's like power and ground and then the RX and TX is for both. Um, but look, if you have a problem where you have two serial ports somewhere and you want one USB conversion, this will totally do the job for you. Okay, as far as your time, besides you, Lydia, the team at Adafruit, our customers, the community, and the moderns of technology where we can do a recording and play it live is... Dun, dun, dun. It's the VCNL 4200. Um, we did like videos and I released a breakup for the VCNL 4020. And then like one day I typoed it and I accidentally went to the 4200 page. I was like, oh, this is kind of a cool sensor too. So this is a long range infrared distance sensor. So, you know, in general, when we talk about long range sensing, we usually tell people get a time of flight sensor. Um, and we stock a ton of those, like the VL 53, 51, 54, whatever, the, all of those in the TMF series. Those TMF flight sensors are super great and everything. They can go multiple meters, but they're a little bit more expensive. Also, sometimes maybe you don't want a laser for some reason. Um, these sensors, you know, this is, the data sheet says they'll go to 1.5 meters. I think that's very optimistic. I think one meter is a very reasonable thing to assume. You don't get the true distance output. You just get like a number that gives you like the amount of light that bounced back. Um, but still, like it's much less expensive. Um, maybe if you are in a situation where you can't use a laser, but infrared light is okay, uh, um, then the VCNL 4200 is great. It's uh, also got a light sensor built in. So I've got like a quick demo over here. Um, so let's see, you can actually see the IR light blasting out of here. So this is, um, it's got the light sensor. So as I cover it, you see the ALS, the um, ambient, what? The ambient light sensor uh, goes down to like close to zero and the proximity goes up to the top. And then as my hand goes up, so this is about like, you know, as you, as you get higher, the numbers don't change as quickly. Uh, but this is, um, you know, it's good for like basic distance proximity sensing without giving you the true millimeter output. I think that'll still be useful for some people. Um, so you have it in the store now, check it out, especially if you need a light sensor. 
uh, and you don't want to spend like 15 bucks, then this is a, a, a great alternative for infrared distance sensing. That's new.